Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am glad to see some people interested in cancer testing. Like a previous doctor mentioned and expressed the importance of the clinical laboratory generally in diagnosis and eventually in follow-up of various and just about uh, all diseases. But it's the same with cancer. Some articles have appeared in the biomedical journals saying that and stating that actually there are there should be some screening tests for cancer so that one can be aware of those prior to the actual appearance of the disease. Well, that's exactly what, what we are doing at American Metabolic Laboratories for a good number of years, and we're coming to the point of uh, almost like perfection of that. What do I have here? Okay, my, my talk will be on the role of the PHI enzyme in carcinogenesis in the clinic and clinical applications in the cancer profile and longevity profile. Uh, let's see, how do I go with this? Oh. Okay, so that, that's the title. This, are, this is some of my background and credentials. I'm a clinical laboratory director in the states of Florida, New York, and California. And uh, so I pretty much know what's going on in the clinical laboratory and supervising and overseeing this in uh, sometimes a number of laboratories. Let's go back. How do, how do I go back on this? Jeez. There. Okay. Before I go into any details, this, this will be like a model that I have uh, composed of as a theory of carcinogenesis, how does it really occur? Uh, there are a lot of questions what cancer is. One thing we know it is an uncontrollable cell division. The cells cannot stop from dividing and eventually will accumulate in a tumor. And this has many implications including metastasis and various complications which come along with the tumor. So cancer to various uh, theories, particularly the trophoblastic theory, would start with trophoblasts. Trophoblasts are the embryonic cells. These are the products of fertilization. Sperm eats eggs, and uh, we have now a haploid cell, I'm sorry, a diploid cell with, with two uh, chromosomal complements. And when these cells start to divide, we'll produce trophoblasts. At this point, the cells will generate HCG, human chorionic gonadotropic hormone. Now I heard a, a couple of pre presentations about stem cells and the uncertainty may be as to where stem cells coming from. Well, they can only come from trophoblasts because those are the most embryonic cells there are. Interestingly, and this is really just a pilot test and experiment, I find that stem cells also will produce HCG. Now, as, as you will know and see, and I'll document this to you later, HCG is or can be called the autocrine proliferate, cell proliferative factor. In other words, if you have one cell that produces HCG, like a trophoblast, maybe the stem cell, that will multiply, and now you're going to have two, you're going to have four, you're going to have eight, you're going to have 16, so, far, so, so, so on and so forth. So HCG is a hormone of cell multiplication, particularly of cancer cells. Okay, this trophoblast will survive in a low oxygen tension environment. And because of this low oxygen tension, the trophoblasts are capable of making HCG. Interestingly, at the same time, there's an enzyme I'll be talking about also, the PHI enzyme, a phosphohexose isomerase, the production of this enzyme also requires low oxygen tension, and as you will see, it actually metabolizes the conversion of glucose 6-fructose to fructose 6-phosphate and will lead cells into anaerobic fermentation, and this is what cancer cells favor. So now we have, say, the original cancer cell, if it is, the stem cells, which may actually turn to be cancerous, as, as various authors have already indicated. We have a little oxygen tension. But what will really push these cells 
the cancer cells, that is, to remain immortal. As we know, cancer cells are immortal. That means they don't die. We have some cultured cancer cells for decades, actually. It's, uh, the HeLa cells, I believe, are now, gosh, almost, if not 100 years old. They've been cultivated in, in uh, cell cultures, and they are immortal. They don't die. So what will make these cells now remain immortal? Well, the answer to me is, and you can think about it, that it will be the telomeres, the telomeric end, the telomeric tail of the cancer cells, or of any cells. So the telomeric tail will utilize the uh, 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 immortality Viagra called, called telomerase, the enzyme, and a perfect system is there working, moving. You have the, the HCG hormone that will cause, cause the cell multiplication. The PHI enzyme, that is the autocrine motility factor, will cause the cells to move, to even cause micrometastasis or to be the circulating cancer cell. And you have the mover of all these things, the enzyme telomerase. At this point, I am working on developing a method, a useful clinical method, for utilizing the telomerase assay in a cancer profile that I will describe to you in a little bit.